you talking to you, you're not going to hear me talking, but the moment I start the show, this is kind of when the intro comes in. But I haven't really done a video yet for 2019 yet. Woo! Ready? First one. Number one. <laughs> hey there, everyone. Thank you for downloading and listening to episode 102 of the Dependent Independent Podcast. I'm your host, Nick G., and this is a 200-episode podcast about making connections, looking back while moving mm-hmm. forward. I'm going to do that again because that's <laughs> not my intro. Hey there, everyone. Thank you for downloading and listening to episode 102 of the Dependent Independent Podcast. I'm your host, Nick G. And if this is the first time you're listening to the show or watching this, this show on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button, whether it be on YouTube, that bell, and you get reminded when we post new shows or find the subscribe button on whatever podcast player you're playing this on. So you get the show each and every Thursday at 9 a.m. because these shows post each and every Thursday at 9 a.m. If you are uh, have you have been with me on this show since I started? Thank you for hanging out. It's really great to have you. And uh, let's get started. So I'm actually not alone. I, I have not been alone uh, in this studio for probably three months because I was doing a lot of self-reflection and I needed to get away uh, from everybody. But this is a long time coming. I want to introduce my my co-host today. Uh, I'm, even though they can hear you or they can see you on, on video, I'm going to build you up. You ready? Okay, I'm ready. So my co-host today is a member of the community here in Hamilton, New Jersey. See, I mentioned the community, but that's all <laughs> I'm going to do. And she she is 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 she's taken a passion that she's had uh, for qu- quite some time, and that's why I want to talk to you about uh, in uh, biking, communal biking, and has created an environment where people come together in this town to do something that a lot of people don't usually do: is just hop on a bike like we did when we were kids. And ride around town and have some fun. And uh, it's been a long time coming because I've talked to my co-host for, uh, uh, we've been kind of back and forth on Facebook, but uh, you and I connected uh, almost like a year ago when I'm like, dude, you got to be on my show. And you went, I'll be there. And then I said, I'm going to forget about it for a year. And then you reminded me we were in a shop right and I felt guilty. I was in line behind you shopping and I thought, shit. And I even grabbed my phone. I'm like, got to get Alicia on the show. So I have... Now, it's Alicia Fields. I always call you Alicia Fields. That's fine. But it's Alicia Fields. That's your maiden name, right? Fields is my maiden name. Okay, yeah. Fields. There's Fields in town. Do you know that? There really? are. Oh, are you We related? are not related. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so I have Alicia, That's the question. I have Alicia Fields Murphy here. She's going to join me. And, and we've kind of bounced around topics. Usually I pick a topic. Uh, but um, what I, I think I was kind of digesting, I think I want to talk about the things, and uh, we'll, I want to get to the biking thing, things that we did as kids, because when I think about biking, I think about the activities we did as kids that were so much fun, but as adults, we start looking at it as work. And uh, to get there, though, I want let's talk about you first, because I really want to know, uh, uh, where did biking start? <laughs> well, actually, you know what? How long have you lived here? Uh, in Hamilton? Yeah, see, we're going to do this. It's great because you guys don't know this, but like 10 minutes ago, Alicia gave me a compliment and said, it's really interesting. You get like people on the show, you really talk about like Hamilton. Well, sorry, but that's what we're going to do. That's How long, fine. You, I love talking about you, Hamilton. Are you from here? I am, yeah. Were you born here? I was not. Oh. My parents aren't from here, so, you know. But wait, you just said you're not from here. You weren't born here. I wasn't born here. No, oh. we moved here when I was three. Oh, okay. So I've always gone to school here. Okay. I've always lived here. My parents still live in the house I grew up in. I made my husband come here. Where's your husband from? Washington Township. So not far. Township? Township. I used to to live in Township. Did you? Yeah, I was there for seven years. That's where we had our kids. Oh, there you go. And we moved here because it was too big. Crater Lake. That's where he lived. uh, No. Crater Drive? Crater Drive. That's it. We were uh, Orion Way. Yeah. I don't know. See, in Washington Township in, 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 (laughs) what what was that? Gloucester County, right? Yeah. Yep. So in South Jersey, Gloucester County, we're in Atlantic County right now. They have a, uh, a a town. The township township is basically like the suburbs of Philly because the Italian the Italians that are there are actually Philadelphia Italians. Yeah, I kind of consider Washington Township like probably how Hamilton was like no fifty years ago. No, no, no. no. Like they're more recent Philly oh, converts. Because like, I, you know well, I, I, mean? like, well, I think people here they're from Philly though. There's but, a lot of people. But the came Italians here from that here are from Italy. Italy via Philadelphia. Really? Yeah, a lot of people no. here. No, yes, I thought they yes. came right here, opened up the I mean, blueberry farms. I mean, some of them did, it. but a lot of people right. here came from. You Philly. just dispelled like that's I'm lame. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. I thought there was like a big difference between. No, I think a lot of them came from the here. same block in Philadelphia too, okay. Okay. as well as coming off the boat. So from, you were born yeah. here, or no? I wasn't you born moved here. here when you were three. Yeah, my parents are from Jersey. Okay. They moved to Hamilton when I was three. Where are your parents from? Um, Burlington County. Oh, Mount Holly, East Hampton. Okay. Yeah. And then you're three. 
Yeah. Uh, you hang out here. You have you still have friends that you grew up with that you're oh, friends with? Oh, my best friends. Yeah. Okay, cool. I saw my number one friend since first day of kindergarten. Do you have like, – I don't have any more <laughs> – I don't have any friends from that. Actually, uh, my prom date, who was uh, my best friend in high school. Yeah. Her name was Caroline. She posted a, a photograph last night of – she and I at the prom, like a group picture, mm -hmm. and I hadn't seen this photo. Oh, I saw that. You had a lot of hair. Isn't that weird, dude? My hair was <laughs> my hair used to be longer than that, and like longer yeah. than that. And and hair and no glasses, right? No glasses. Or yeah, I didn't wear glasses because I thought uh, in photographs it it uh, it wouldn't look cool. Isn't that weird? <laughs> so if you want to see, if you guys follow me on Facebook, my 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 last name, even though I'm Nick G, it's it's Nick Goblish. Uh, I hate you can. Chip, I'll put the link. <laughs> I hate. I'll put the link in, in the description of the of the show. Uh, follow me, and you can see uh, this this prom picture. And it, it's it's a shame because there's a lot of friends I have on that photograph that I'm not friends with anymore. We just simply grew apart. I've talked about that before uh, on my show, and um, that is probably the most insecure and lowest self esteem I've ever had. And it was it was interesting telling my kids. Like you know, <laughs> I actually said to my son, I said it'd be really cool to be able to go back and like just hang out. Like, as that kid was leaving the prom and walk up to him and be like, yo, dude, come here, man. Yo, it'll be all right. It'll be all right, man. It'll be okay. Just keep that chin yeah. up and you'll be fine. I think we all feel that way, though. But that, Yeah, About, but but it's know. weird that, that now it's captured on, on Facebook. Well, it was cool That's, being able to look at yeah. that. The kids were kind of like, Megan, I think Megan had seen that photograph, but my wife, but I, I don't think I've ever, uh, I've ever shown any of those photographs to the kids. They'd never seen me with that much hair. You had a lot of hair. It was longer though. It got kind of curly, like it would go down the forehead and then go, and then like curl. It was so <laughs> wacky. Sometimes if it got really long, it would start doing that. There was a time I've said this on the show that that my hair was so long. It was uh, it was during uh, the Point Break when that movie Ooh. came out. We were surfing. My friends and I were surfing, and we all decided, dude, let's just grow our hair out like Keanu Reeves, and and we all grew our hair out. And I remember I could put it in a ponytail. And my grandmother didn't like that. And she's like, oh, what have you done? And I, I, what have you done? I had about an inch and a half. About an inch and a Woo! half. That was awesome. I, I, I had and such send that hair. to Locks for Love. There's a photograph my, in my yearbook. My sister has my high school yearbook where I was voted nice, nicest guy with uh, Celine McNally. She was our mm -hmm. nicest girl. My arms around her and my hair is the longest it was. There's no curl. It's all the way down like here. Pretty. But I had to get it cut like every two weeks, which was so stupid. <laughs> like I, I got scanned by some salon next to where I work that, oh, come here every two weeks. We'll take care of it for you. Even though it was long? Yeah, it had to be. It, it just it had. Yeah, it just had to be cut. Well, I got suckered in. I paid that yeah. guy like 25 bucks every other week. So the money I made for my, my high school job, I ended up burning it at the salon. <laughs> Uh, I don't remember the guy. Gay Gary or something we called him? I can't remember. Oh, I that's can't. terrible. I, I know it's terrible. I, I, but I don't know why. it was. He had to, like my friends had to admit that, I mean, he was gay, but uh, I don't know why they had his name. I could be making that up. I can be absolutely making that up. Please don't call me on that. Please don't call me on that. So if anyway. You, if you're listening, he's sorry, Gay Gary. No, that's, no hey, I'm, I'm, I'm very involved in the LBG community. A lot of my friends are, are in the LBG community. So uh, no, that was uh, nothing but endearment because he was, he was good. I can't remember his name though now. I'm going to have to text my buddy and ask him what his name is. And I will put that. I will talk about that in the next show. So you grow up here. Yes. You are, you have tons of friends from kindergarten. Uh, you do that. So when, uh, you being big into biking, and when I say that, it's weird because I said that on my, my uh, video or my mm -hmm. podcast this morning, the one that posted this week, uh, Minnesota 101 and a half, that I said biking, but I felt like I needed to correct myself because when you think of biking. Bicycling. No, bicycling. Because when I think of biking, I immediately yeah. was like, I get that asked a lot. I'm like, so bicycling. Yeah, bi yeah. I guess they expect adults to be on motorcycles, not bicycles. So when I talk about it, I'm like, oh, no, no, no. I mean, like the pedal. Like we're pedaling. Like, do you know that, do you know that, uh, and I might be skipping ahead, but do you know the way we bike? We That's who we think we think about you when we bike. You remember when that's I got awesome. my bike, yeah. I had a selfie that the whole family was biking. It was great. So so tell me, what, what was biking like when you were a kid? Like why? <clears throat> was it anything? Did you just yeah? No, pick it, it was um yeah no. I always had a bike. Uh, I learned how to ride a bike. You know, like most kids early. But my parents had their bicycles like ten speeds. They were very fancy from like they bought in like the seventies, like well before I was around. They still had them. And once I got old enough, like I also had a ten speed, and we would go. Like my dad would throw them all in the truck, and we would go. Like I don't know, we'd go out to Batstow. Like we'd take little trips and just bicycle around the three of us and um once I got a little older like middle school um sorry dog, dog hair, hair. <laughs> <laughs> just pulling dog hair off a of microphone um if you're not from town I lived like I live 
My parents live like down Pleasant Mills Road, so it's not somewhere you would let a kid ride their bike. Why is it um, busy? Yeah, like 542, like out oh, towards Batstow. See, I don't, by the way, yeah. lived here a long time, All still don't know the name. Batstow. Oh, I know it. Do you know where Batstow is? No, I do, I do, yeah. but Pleasant, so you go past, Pleasant Mill? Yeah, it's okay. 542. Um, like, I couldn't ride my bike from my house anywhere, so my mom would put my bike in the car <laughs> and take me downtown to a friend's house, <laughs> and her and I would ride around town, and her mom would be like... <laughs> don't go past whatever 8th Street. And we'd be like, okay. So like we would immediately just past go Street. past 8th Street. That was like our Ooh, destination. Yeah. <laughs> like, but you know, that time we were probably like like 6th, 7th grade, like 13, I guess. But you know, it was like freedom. Did you like, have a brand new bike when you got your first bike? Or uh, did you have a used bike? Uh, my very first bike was a 10 speed that I'm pretty sure came from a yard sale. And I was little. I was probably like in 4th grade. Mm -hmm. So like a 10 speed was a little much for me. <laughs> so then when I got like probably like the next year or two, my parents bought me a brand new purple giant mountain bike. And it was the greatest. And then it got stolen when I was in college. I had my bike stolen once. A girl in the was... apartment complex actually found found it in the town next door and brought it back that was yeah. kind of cool mine was not found and it was a very sad day because i would ride my bike to class when i was in college actually i gotta show it to you before you leave i have a piece of the trek that i owned um when i was in college that was my former a yellow trek yeah i paid four hundred dollars for it i think uh, it was made of aluminum fancy not that graphite is... aluminum right yeah and uh i took it to the local bike shop to get it restored and then I went on a bike ride and a half a mile. It just jammed up on me and I just gave up. I didn't even take it back. I'm like, I'm cutting you in half. So I cut oh. the piece of the frame off that had the bottle holder on it because I couldn't get the bottle holder off. My first bike was used. So I didn't have a lot of, we all, most of the dirt bikes we had. Do girls yeah. do this? Like, I know you probably can do this with a 10 speed, but skidding, <laughs> like skidding, any way you can wear down the tires to ride as fast as you can and um, skid. Did you do tricks on it on your not 10 speed? Not skidding, but I definitely had a, like a family friend. Their kids were all kind of the same age as me, and we definitely built like shady ramps in the front yard. You like, tell me your shadiest ramp, and I'll tell you my shadiest <laughs> I mean, they weren't like too shady, but just like, you know, a piece of like plywood that's kind of like this, and mm -hmm. then you put it on like a two by four, which is clearly like not able to support like I'm a gonna one -up you. 60 pound child. I'm going to one up <laughs> you. Growing up in an apartment complex with my dad, uh, we had uh, a parking lot that had this island in the middle, and the cars parked on around the island and then around the out, other outside of the mm -hmm. island, if that makes sense. And it was Doggy Island. Now, I don't know if I've ever mentioned Doggy Island on the podcast, but Doggy Island was pretty funny because that's where everybody took their dogs to take a shit. <laughs> and when you played wiffle ball, basketball, or anything, the moment you hit Doggy Island, your walk changed to a very, like, <laughs> I'm running around a minefield. So yeah, you'd- A little tippy-toey. You'd, tippy you'd, you'd hop yeah. like, it was, the, and, and I, I tell my kids this, and we were actually, I think, did I, I don't know if I ever took them there, but I've demonstrated what it meant to on Dog Island. So we would ride bikes and have races with the apartment kids. And Around. everybody had different bikes, like yeah. cruisers, dirt bikes, 10 speeds. And one time, um, I cannot believe I didn't break my back on this. Someone, forget a piece of plywood. Think about a two by four on a brick. <laughs> okay. So a two, maybe a one okay. by four on a brick. Okay. Like you have to hit it like Perfect. perfectly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I hit it and, and I pulled up and I remember like, <laughs> like, I pulled gravity, I stopped it, and gravity went up, and I landed on my back, and then the bike landed. And it never, that's one thing, knock on wood, I never broke a bone. Um, there's a trick that 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 uh, my friend's brothers would talk about called an endo. You know what an endo is? Uh, like a front. Front, front but usually, what, but what you, but what, Right? This is, I'm sorry, <laughs> this is awesome. I love this story. It's, it's an endo is obviously a, a front wheelie, but mm -hmm. in movies like Rad or, or, um, BMX Bandits, which are great. Rad is one of the greatest movies. Crew <laughs> Jones, um, hero of mine, skipped his SATs to to go against uh, Bart Connor uh, to, for a bike race that he would. I don't even know what he would win. So when you do an endo, you have uh, handbrakes. Well, someone told me, well, if you if you ride your bike and you put your foot between the wheel and the rim, then you do a a wheelie. Now, I'm not a physicist, <laughs> but when you, I know about inertia. And obviously Newton's law of, um, of motion where when a f something, a, a force, what is it? Something in motion stays in motion until a force acts upon it. Well, uh, at the time they were building a lot of these condominium uh, places around my apartment complex. Mm -hmm. Now it's like the whole road is apartment complexes. And I'm in this dirt thing and I'm riding, I'm riding, I'm riding. And then I decide to put my foot between that and all I remember, <laughs> all I remember is complete launching 
like launching through the air. Like I'm, and then you can't see this on, on you can't see this on video, but my arms are flailing like this, and then the bike is like flying over my head, and I landed. I you know I probably just had some stones in my hands because yeah, I'm yeah. I'm like unbreakable. I never break anything, and I thought, well, that's not how you do it. Like that's definitely not how you do a front wheelie. You and got some I, bad. And then intel. as I got older, so a lot of the stuff like did you? So you went biking with your family. Yeah. Me, biking was simply a way to how close could I get to death? <laughs> like, how far can I push myself? Yeah. But you were definitely wearing a helmet, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Why did they do that? <laughs> so this is that's a Jersey law. If you're listening to this somewhere else, I don't know if if other states require that. Do other states require you to to? Um, I don't know if it's a law and I'm not sure what the deal with it is, but I definitely know as a mother of two crazy little boys, like I'm putting a helmet on them. Not the, no, if I'm, if I've, I'm wearing like full blown, like we have ski helmets. Yeah. Like those helmets are brain buckets. Bike helmets. I don't understand how a bike helmet sits on the dome like yeah. this. No, my kids wear like the BMX helmets. So they come cool. down awesome. around their ears, awesome. like in the back of their heads. For, so really? Like a real yeah, helmet? Like a real okay. helmet. Yeah. Okay. Not like the... No. I don't know. But yeah, no. I never owned a bike helmet. Like as a kid. Like, do you have a bike helmet? No one. We would beat the shit. Not beat the shit. No, but we would be so like, you nerd. Pussy. <laughs> like, what is that guy wearing? That would be weird. I No, the only kid, really, I hate this. The only kids that wore helmets were kids that like maybe bumped their heads a lot. Right? Is that terrible, right? It's terrible. But I really, guess. those are the only I don't kids. I ever Helmets are so anybody. cool. I mean, you know, you can go to, they can get helmets with. You know, rubber spikes on yeah. it and mohawks and My stuff o- like that. My oldest got one for Christmas this year, so even though never, we already had a helmet. So you never yeah. did any, like, tricks or anything to try to push, you know, hit a curb and do no, bunny hops? No, like and... you, I've never broken a bone in my body. Uh, I did break my pinky, but that was in college, and that's a whole other story. That's a whole other podcast. Well, we to wait for that one. <laughs> um, i got to write that down. I don't know. I think I was just a very careful kid. Like, I don't know. I was just cautious. We just went away. Like, you bike with your parents. My father wasn't home, so we just went out like right. That was how far, did. and it's always cool because you'd be like, "How far can you go?" Like now, I look back and I drove a mile and a half from my house. Right. You never, now people are like, "Oh, I'm driving from Philadelphia to Atlantic City," and blo-. like if I was a kid, I'd be like, "Jesus Christ!" If I'm doing that, like I'm moving. Like that's it feels like I'm moving. Yeah. But just the fact you can on your own because right. you were walking, hop on a bike and actually drive and ride your bike to the beach or the shore, lock it somewhere, and be like, "Look at all this freedom I have." No, that's the best this thing about awesome. a bike. It's freedom. That's what a bike is. It's freedom. So how does how does someone go from uh, riding bikes with their kids to now suddenly being this advocate? <laughs> Were you always like that? Did you ride a bike in college? In I school? did. Okay. Um, like I I, that was my only form of transportation. I lived in Philadelphia when I went to college, mm-hmm. and I lived right downtown. I lived right by the art museum. And when I went to Temple, Temple has like their main campus in North Philly, but they also have a downtown campus called Temple University Center City, Tuck. And I would ride my bike there. That's what Tuck is? Temple University Center City. T-U-C-C? Yeah. All right, whatever. It's right there. It's right across from um, City Hall. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'd ride my bike there all the time. And then it got stolen, and then I stopped riding my bike. And then I didn't have a bike for a long time. Like a very long time. Why did it get stolen? Um, because... How, how did, not why. That's a stupid question. <laughs> why did it get stolen? Because some asshole decided to steal it. Some asshole stole it, but some asshole borrowed it. It's kind of where it started. Um, my, uh, you know, Colleen, if you're listening to this, I'm sorry. But I Your live friend? with my cousin, and her terrible boyfriend borrowed my bike. And I don't know if he just didn't lock it up or what. But and he, he sold like, it for drugs. I don't think he sold it for drugs. He was like, I don't know. I don't think he was that clever. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like much of a purpose. Just... Yeah, but he like just like walked him and was like, "Oh, your bike got stolen." I was like, oh, "Okay, cool. I've only had that bike for 20 years, but it's like." Do you ever watch those uh, really cool like? Uh, listen to me like like uh, do you ever watch those cool videos on YouTube where they electrify the seat on a bike and a guy has a taser like remote taser and he leaves his bike out and someone oh, steals someone it oh when someone steals it oh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that's, that's bittersweet fun. and yeah. then the one where they tie a rope to a wire to it and a guy pedals yeah or and, have you seen the it where they out? take the wheels off so it just looks like the bike's together and then they get on it oh, and, and it they go apart? to pedal and they're just oh, like <laughs> those are great why do people why do people in those videos feel compelled that they, they, like, I've never in a million years have walked by a bike and go, that's not locked up. I should probably take that. Why, I why are even people think so that. compelled? Like, not even, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't or you know. ever see that grown man that's riding a bike on, a, like, a child's bike? Right, and you're, you're like, like, wait a second. Unless you asked yeah. your niece to borrow that bike, yeah. why are you riding you that bike? You see that a lot in the city, too. Because I sort of, like, I joke that the 
cities like the original bike share like now there's like a real bike share thing like there's city bike and stuff i'm like i lived in the city like there's a bike share it's like you see a bike you take, you take it. it i don't get and then that. like i don't think you keep that bike i don't think when you steal a bike it's like you're like oh this is my bike so now. they just leave it out and they just leave it and then someone else steals it and then you ride it to another destination so unless you're in a community where bike sharing is an absolute agreement <laughs> or the other, if it's combined, yeah. you don't. On the cusp of the city, you're like, oh, man, we're not in bike share town. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. I know I'm not going to see really my bike. But I really feel like that's kind of what goes on in the city. And then, unfortunately, people who, like, like their bikes and want to keep their bikes are sometimes the victims of the bike share. I mean, I'm lucky. My bike was stolen, actually. The neighbor found actually it. found uh, Jamie uh, Holak, Huliak, <laughs> something. Sorry if you're listening, Jamie. I don't think you're yeah. listening that uh, she was able to find the bike like she actually found it and I never asked her I would love to, I would love as a grown adult to be able to thank her for that because I don't think I knew the gravity of that 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 bike could have just disappeared yeah never to be seen again would have changed your life because you weren't getting a new bike no I, I the 10 speed was the only bike I got that was brand new and then the bike that uh, I got uh, in college that was a fun that was really good that was my pretty much transportation I mean I yeah. rode I rode to the, my work I rode to class that bike was awesome. It was a it was a banana yellow, uh, forty one hundred Trek. I think um, it was. Uh, it had no shocks. I had did I have sho- I might have shocks put in, and I had grips put in. So we have some friends of ours. Actually, did, a friend. Did you that, have pegs put on? No, I've no. always wanted pegs. Pegs were awesome. Oh, I love <laughs> pegs. The fact that you can if, and if guys you're listening, you don't know what pegs are. Pegs are these uh, steel rods that they they just screw on the 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 axle of a bike, whatever's left on the uh, extended out of the where the uh, wheel is attached to the bike and it's they're like shoe i mean they're basically like stirrups and it was awesome because not only could you ride your dirt bike but you could someone can hang on the back with right. their hands on your shoulders which obviously is so safe and they could stand on that the worst is the guy pegs and a handlebars and the guy that rides someone on the handlebars yeah did you do so this my friend had a cruiser that had a big enough uh seat or uh, handlebars that I would sit on it and he would sit on it and during the fall we would try to find real big piles of leaves and you ride <laughs> full speed and you hit the brakes and the person launches into the leaf. No, but that sounds fun. Really maybe we fun. can do that in the fall. Maybe not. Maybe, <laughs> maybe not because that would be sick and stupid. Like if you want to do that, that's cool. But I'm breaking something doing that. So uh, you 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 ride bikes in college. You're, someone steals your bike. So did you think about doing what you're doing now with this communal bike? It, I'm sorry, I haven't it's, said it. Uh, the kickstand crew, which uh, is what, uh, for those on video, it's, uh, I got these. These are cool. This is, <laughs> these are cozies, right? This koozies? Koozies. Koozies. Uh, it really only established last year, the kickstand crew? Well, it's 2019, so technically two years Or three ago. years? I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, it's not whatever. Oh, I threw yeah. an attitude. I'm sorry I threw an attitude. We're there. coming on to our third season. Third season. We start in April. Cool. Okay. <laughs> so uh, did you... I mean, when did that f- switch flip where you thought you'd put, because you've put in a lot, you put a lot of time into this, you know, I have. we have bikes and, and I, we take it for granted. I mean, look, I sawed my bike in half. Like I actually killed my bike <laughs> and then I got this wicked ass cruiser. It's awesome. But I got bike racks now. They're all hanging up in the garage. The, the fact that when did you decide to start putting all this time in to be able to build a community around something? Did you, I mean, did you? When your bike was stolen, you did you turn your back on biking and go, ah, this sucks. And then, and then suddenly <laughs> something happens. You're like, I got to get back into it. And you just yeah, got into it. I don't really know when it switched. I, I, no, I guess I do. Um, so my husband lived in Philly. I lived here. And then we got engaged and we bought a home. And it was right downtown. And it was like the perfect reason to bike. I was like, we're proximity and it's safe i'm not living out on pleasant mills road anymore i don't have to drive my bike three miles to get like to the white horse pike um so then that's kind of where it started and i bought myself a f- fancy new bike and i've seen your bike it's very fancy i love my you guys ever see uh peewee herman's uh big adventure it's a, it's it's a little like, peewee herman but it's it's, it's, it's no it's, it's cool. not not really it's, over the top but it's, it's the colors it's, it's, it's not colors. even that it's 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 you've 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 <laughs> have a lot of pride and you're, you're like you pimped it out you pimp, it's pimped out it's got a and lot of baskets. Sub, and, and subtle, yeah, and a lot of it's baskets. It's got a lot of baskets. It's a very fancy bike. It's called Public, and it's from San Francisco. Your bike's from San Francisco? That's where the company's from, yeah. Oh, I thought it was like custom made. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not that fancy. But um, yeah, so I bought a bike, and like right after we got married, yeah, it was right after we got married, and I bought my bike, and I was riding everywhere, and I was like, you know what? This is like fun, but it would be way more fun if more people wanted to ride bikes. I'm like, how do you get people to ride bikes? They're like, you know, I'm like, you know what? 
people like doing things that other people do. Like people like doing things that are f- like that's fun that other people are doing. So it was like, you know, it's sort of like But to your point, but I'm sorry to stop. If you, you build it, they will come. That was kind of but my uh, the idea of like like you ride bikes when you're a kid. I was saying that before. You know, yeah. you do something that's fun when you ride bikes when you're a kid. And then now you look at it like what do people do now when they think about adults riding bikes? They're on Pelotons, they're doing like spin shit, which is f- fucking weird. Like that's <laughs> I tried that once. Like that nothing yeah. like pretending next to your wife that you're actually not gonna die of a heart attack and be like, No, I could do- and, and we, oh, we can, oh we can we sign up. Yeah, let's sign up and yeah. keep doing this. I will say spin is the only kind of like exercise I've ever done where I was like <laughs> Wedding, where I was just like, I think no, I the might, guy we I did. think I might die. This is nuts, this and, is like and, and you don't want your peer pressures. You don't want to stop. You don't. Want, you don't want to take a break. No, you're yeah. like doing this and, and turning the knob and all that. That's ridiculous. I think it's ridiculous. Yeah. The Peloton I thing's mean, cool because you can actually do it in your own home, and yeah. and there's you can stop and go, ah, fuck it, I'm out. Like I'm gonna take a break for 20 right. minutes. But, but I maybe never... that's not the best thing if you're trying to get in shape. Maybe that's not. Well, no, it's okay. <laughs> oh, you know, I'm good. I'm gonna take a break. This Nordic you track. That, you need that peer pressure. <laughs> Nordic. I know. It's like this is. Uh, I'll I'll start tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. So when you uh, when I was a kid and I'm riding bikes, it was it was fun doing jumps and hitting two by fours. Like that was trust me. Like the endo yeah. between the endo and that, I should have died. I should have died. Uh, but you do all that and bikes and then college it was like a form of conveyance but it's not like i really like i would go all the way to see meg and, yeah. and stuff but it wasn't really something where yeah it wasn't um, uh, no i had fun in college too. well you didn't have yeah. well, the only reason why i rode a bike is because i didn't have money for a car but now that i have we all have adults and most of us we all have cars and most right. of us have cars right, right, right. like you say to yourself like well then i don't need a bike anymore you know i don't need a bike anymore i don't do it right so it was fun and now it's work but you found a way to make it fun. So it I want fun. you to tell my audience, like, not only did you think, what what are some of the things you've done in the kickstand? Plus, it's a really cool name. <laughs> it's a really, did you come up with that? Uh, Yeah. Is this solely you or do you have a partner that came up with this? No, it's me. Okay. Because I thought, <laughs> no, I see sometimes. Um, we have, we, I mean, I have like an original like crew, but yeah, no, it was it was my idea. I brought it, uh, Hamilton has a bicycle. So, uh, what, what is it called? B-A-C? I know that. <laughs> Bicycle Advisory Commission. There okay. we go. Okay. See, I told you, I forget things. Sorry, Bicycle we don't Advisory Commission. Here. And uh, I went to a meeting and I like told them, I was like, I have this idea for like a social bike club. None of these people had ever met me. And they were like, You're amazing. We're doing it. I told you. Everybody's joining. I told you. See, what Alicia doesn't understand <laughs> is Alicia could come up and say, I'm thinking of starting a crab cake club. <laughs> a lot of people like crab cakes. <laughs> it's funny, it's a lot of work to get jumble lump crab meat out of a crab, but we're going to get a bunch of people together. <laughs> We're going to tear apart crabs, and we're going to make uh, our Hamilton uh, crab cake, uh, and and people will go like, "Holy shit! I think I'm in." You know that you please accept that. <laughs> okay. I know it's tough. You, we'll talk. I accept it. But no, it's really <laughs> when you're excited about something. Yeah. You can find a way to make other people excited about it, and the fact is, you're not all your. What you were did was you got me excited enough to enjoy. Like, I don't have a dirt bike because I'm not a dummy. Like, I could easily go out and go, <laughs> you know, I'm going to get my old Huffy and, and do that, but I'd kill myself. Yeah. But the no. fact that I can go out with my kids and feel good about the bike. It's fun. And, but th- it, the first person I thought of when we were, I mean, I'll never forget it. I'm like, I got a Facebook Live this and tag Alicia on it as we were riding. We're like, yeah, we're doing it. And I know. And, and I was on vacation. Otherwise, I would have come and join you. No, I know. It was yeah. Sucked, but, I think I was in Florida. But the <laughs> fact that the, the, we're still hesitant to let the kids. It's weird, you know. When we were yeah. kids, we just went around and did yeah. biking. But to let the kids go through town, they could probably go through town to get to, to get to downtown. Stay off of Egg Harbor Road, which yeah. is a busy road. Um, I unfortunately live on a street where, even though it's twenty five miles an hour, it's a throughway between one main highway and another real busy uh, road. Yeah. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people that like, I mean, yeah. zip up and down this road. We don't even want them on this road. No, I go on no dangerous roads. I will take yeah, the longest way to get somewhere. You should just probably so do that with the kids, to... like show them where yeah. to go. But yeah. to be able to ride your bike to school, which would be yeah. great. I mean, that would be awesome if the kids can do that so they wouldn't have to ride the bus. They can ride their bike to school. Like I rode my bike to work, which was awesome. So you were telling me, I'm sorry, I, I this is what I do. I took it. Bing. You, <laughs> you, uh, you, the BCBAC. Yeah. And you went there and they, they loved you. And you were like, hey, I want to start this kickstand crew thing. Yeah. So did you need fun? You, you you branded this, but did you like, that's, it's just the just, crew? It's, yeah, okay. that's it. We're a club. Just show up. How many members do you have? Uh, it depends on the uh, day. <laughs> I 
I mean, there's no official members. No, not like you have no to, like, there's got to be loyal people that, that... Yeah, no, there's probably, like, if you, like, like, a good, world's like... world's ending right now. The Avengers are all dead, and they go, listen, Alicia, uh, we need you to get your crew like together. probably, seven people. Okay, there you go. See? Like, a I, solid I, I, seven okay. people. Okay. But sometimes we go out, and there's, like, 14 of us, and that's exciting. When there's, like, 10 people, I get very excited. That's cool. Yeah. It, it's very exciting. Sometimes there's only two people show up. But that's fine, too. So you created a community within a community. Yeah, it's good. I know. And I've met so many people that have, like, other bicycling kind of things going on that aren't, like, my bicycling thing, but it's their own bicycling. And it's also very cool. Like, what are some of the things that you do to – by the way, I like your necklace. It's like candy, you. rock candy. Yeah. Very cool. It's from uh, Morgan. She's from town. I know Morgan. Bud to Bloom. I know Morgan. Very yeah. cool. She's a big <laughs> fan of Megan's podcast. Thank you, Morgan. If you're listening and watching, uh, we're, maybe someday we'll launch season two. <laughs> of Megan's podcast. There you go. Um, so uh, what are some of the activities you do? Uh, you know, you don't just bike, but you do a lot of things, right? Plan things. What are some of the things yeah. you, you do? Um, well, they're all based around bicycling. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> um, from April to October, we do third Thursday. Um, where we live in downtown Hamilton, there is a third Thursday every month. Um, so we do that like after work, like probably like 6.30 we usually start. And basically we just do a little bar crawl, hence kickstand crew, because our kickstands are usually up a little more than they're, they're, they're usually down a little more than they're up. But um, we also do like in May, the last two years in May, we did a Hamilton wine tour, which is really fun. But really and far though. Wait, you stayed in Hamilton. We do... only stayed in Hamilton, yeah. I mean, the first year we did it, I think it was like six miles, which like anybody can do six miles. And then last year, it was like maybe like 14 miles. There you go. But we did three wineries last year. So there's a lot of breaks. Sharrett's, White Horse, We went Valentine. to DiMatteo. Is that the one off 8th Street? Sure. Yes, it is. DiMatteo? Yeah, sure it is. I don't know enough uh, about that. I've never been to that winery. Whitehorse Winery is nice. We ended at Whitehorse. Oh, so, so for any of you yeah. listening. And then the one in between. Take Why a sip. I think? For those of you listening, if you have an opportunity Valenzano? to come down. To, no, Valenzano. If you come down know. to uh, South Jersey, to the Hamilton area, you really, there are plenty of places. Yeah. Like, it's amazing. And I got actually, a, 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 a birdie told me today that there may be another brewery opening up in town. I've heard the same. Yeah, woo! birdies are talking so that and which is cool because the person i was talking with not you know most people would say i happen to be at a brewery where i got the lovely ale that we're drinking and the fact that you could say that that's a bad thing but it's actually the best thing like bringing no, more great. more variety of of places to drink and eat in town is nothing but good things yeah. nothing it, it, no one steals from anybody because no. everyone finds an opportunity to enjoy it no and the other thing is people that are really into breweries like if you come somewhere that has they're going four everywhere. of them, oh, dude. they're going everywhere. This is awesome. Like it's amazing. This is, it's awesome. Yeah, and um, we have a ton of wineries. And yes. Someday there's going to be a uh, distillery opening. It's yes, going to be yes. like a nice little drunk town. It's going to be great. Town. I love Not it. Not really that bad. Is it really that bad? <laughs> you ever see a drunk walking around town? What's the craziest thing you saw riding your bike? Mm, I don't know. Craziest thing like in town? I don't no, know. I feel like we're, we're, we're the craziest thing going in town. <laughs> No, but like seriously, like what's the weirdest thing you've ever seen riding your bike around? Mm. I can tell you. I'll tell you. I, I know right now. My wife and I were in Key West for our 10th anniversary. Oh, well, that's a whole other thing. No, <laughs> one of the greatest vacations ever because it was the first time we were without <clears throat> our kids. Not mm -hmm. to say I don't like being around my kids, mm -hmm. but to be free after you're with your kids. And I mean, to a point we got connected to a lawyer and we had wills made because God forbid, you know, yeah, who's yeah. going to take our kids? Yeah. The plane goes down. And we didn't realize... Uh, until like day two that we could get bikes so we rented bikes like 18 bucks a day and which was great because then you go up the whole yeah the whole it's thing. so easy but we were coming it was late at night we went all the way down um is it durnham street or dunham street or something we go all the way down uh past all the drag queen bars and everything and we loop around and we get on the road that our bed and breakfast is on and we get behind the um uh, police station and there's a man walking just walking from the police station but as he came into the light, I realized he was going full Winnie the Pooh because he had <laughs> no pants. He had a shirt, but he had no pants on. And it was funny because all I wanted to do see see the thing about me is uh, the fact that I've been able to live my life with my wife. It makes life so much more enjoyable. And if there's ever an opportunity to enjoy something, I hate it when she's not around. 
But there was, it was, I guess we were more terrified than anything. So we just kept riding our bikes. But if I was able to stop and be able to say, stop for a second, Meg, that's behind the police station. And there's a naked guy, like with just a shirt on. Like, what's that guy all about? But that, if I was to say, of all the times I've ever been on a bike, that was probably the time. And I, I might have pedaled subtly a little bit faster, but I think we were yeah, like, yeah. and then I'm like, yo, Meg, did you see? That naked guy? Did like, she see him? Oh, totally did. Yeah. Like, but I think it was like, wait him. a minute. Because then the thing, you see it and your like... brain goes, that's a dude without pants on. <laughs> and then like the worst thing moving. you could do is say, hey, let's go back. <laughs> you know, let's, let's go back and let's see that guy. But that's the other thing too is when you're on vacation or anything like that, you the, the worry of finding a parking spot, bringing your car, the fact that you can bring a bike and you can park yeah. it anywhere. I think they gave us a lock, but um, – that's finding a place to lock bikes. And I know, were you part of the getting the bike racks in town? That was a pre-Kickstand crew. That yeah. was before me. Okay. That so. was, I know the. I'm a member of the local Rotary. So yeah. that uh, uh, Rob DeRose is actually a, a member of the Rotary. And he, I know that was a big He's one uh, of our, project uh, of his. Yeah. Big proponent. And he, uh, uh, but, he, but I think he likes it's riding bikes with us. But yeah. I think it's great. Be, uh, bike racks don't have to be that complicated. You know, I've seen one. It's no. just two U's and a big piece of steel. Yeah. And uh, it works. You know, you don't have to. Um, you know, double lock your bike. It's, you know, where you lock it, the frame and the wheel and everything because yeah. people well, those, steal the wheels. The ones in town are meant to do that if you wanted to. That's why they're shaped the way they are so that you could double lock it, but it's really not necessary. Oh, if you put it against it. Yeah, that's why oh, they're... Okay, cool. Yeah. But I know that you, I've seen you lock your bike outside of the vinyl. I lock my bike. I want people to use the bike racks. I want people to send me photos of people using the bike racks. I want there to be evidence that they were worth something. No, <laughs> it's great. they're being I mean, used. I think I, I, yeah. I think, I don't, I think I was telling, I was talking to a, a, a friend of mine who wants to launch uh, her podcast. And uh, she was talking about what she, uh, what she wanted her podcast to be. It was very intrinsic, some intrinsic uh, words. You know, things of, of, you know, want to be mindful and want to be uh, mm -hmm. uh, fearless and all these things. And, and, and uh, my advice to her was you don't have to say those things. You just have to be those things. So this is, I know I'm getting weird. When you want people to enjoy your bikes, you, I, my, how I ended that conversation was just make, do that on your show. Be fearless on your show. Be mm -hmm. mindful on your show. You don't have to say it. Just do it. And a close friend of mine uh, who... Um, I've had the pleasure of him being quoted on another podcast. I went to a conference and I, I talked about my friend and then they quoted him on the, on the show, which is great. He's a real quiet guy. He's a friend of mine. I mentioned his name before. Before we, I'll tell you who he is before we, uh, uh, before you leave. Um, he, he, his biggest saying is, don't talk about it, be about it. So when, you, uh, when you're around town and you're riding bikes, if I see a bunch of you dressed in tweed and you got to tell my audience about the tweed, the tweed run. It's very exciting. Very cool. I, 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 I want to do it. Something seems to happen all the time, but then I'm... I'm maybe I'm a little bit fearful that I can't get all the right clothes to do it. It doesn't matter. But to do that around town, you let people know that people ride bikes. Not these. N by the way, we are in a, a hub. We are in a hub of people that ride from Philly to Atlantic City. I mentioned yes. that before. Yes. And they block every freaking road, <laughs> and they and you can't ride your bike or you can't drive your car yeah. because they swarm it. Oh, there's actually signs: don't swarm cars. And it's the weirdest thing. Now it's a shame that I'm saying that because I think even the Rotary. <laughs> actually volunteers i shouldn't say that but that's a different type of biking it's a totally different type of biking. totally different type of biking but that's more annoying than anything i think what you guys do is to see a bunch of adults riding bikes gets more people wanting to ride bikes yeah. I'm, I'm telling you that's why i and that's you're a big part of why i that's, wanted to buy a bike and, I'm, and do that i love hearing that because that's why but you gotta I do, do it. it but you, you know gotta do I mean? it like, like you said when you want people to use the bike racks but the only way to get people, more people use the bike racks is to use the bike racks. Right, exactly. And no, it's really there. like if you build it, they will come. Like you if you park, just keep doing buy it. Buy like six bikes. <laughs> just six random park bikes. Them, park them around, <laughs> put a bunch of tassels on the handlebars, and that way people are like, holy shit, man, I should buy a bike. This is yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. No, it's a, you know. So tell me about the Tweed Run. That's a okay. big event. Tweed Ride is like sort of the end of our season. Um, it's in October. Um, the Tweed Ride, you dress in Tweed. It's like. What's Tweed? Like, uh, you know, like wool, like hound's tooth, like 20s, 30s, okay. harkens back to the days of when people rode bicycles. I did not. You mean bicycles with the big wheel, the one yes, wheel, and then uh, the small wheel in the back? What is that called? What is a, that called? penny something. Yeah, well, it is. I don't know. You're but the expert, is, right? You know what? The opposite of it with a little wheel in the front and a big wheel in the back was actually invented in Hamilton. 
<gasps> oh my god, I have to fact check that. I don't believe you. It's real. It's real. It's real. <laughs> how do you do that? How do you steer? Carefully. I don't know. I don't know how you get on it. Like I've seen guys get on it, but it it's crazy. I would love I to know. get a unicycle. That's one thing I would love to hear. I'm using this guy. <laughs> like that's badass. If you could do a unicycle for six miles for the tweed ride, that, that <gasps> would be amazing. Challenge accepted. So the tweed do ride. They sell unici- unicycles at the. Oh, I'm sure they can get you one. At the bike cycle yeah. bike place. What's the place called? Pro pedals. They ride by my street. The owners of that place <laughs> ride by my street every morning. Well, full, it's right here. <laughs> full, no, but I know it's right here. Yeah. But they they full gear, man. Every morning yeah. they're doing that. I'm sorry. Keep going. Tweed ride. Tweed ride. So that's our only ride that you have to pay. It's a ticket, but like we start at the coffee shop. What? We do like a high tea. Does the ticket then, pay for all that? Yeah. Okay. So it's a high tea. Then we ride six miles. This year we actually stopped halfway because one of the people that rides with us ha- happens to live halfway, and they were gracious enough to let us park a friend's Model T in their front yard. Cool. So then we had like this whole like speakeasy kind of thing going on. Um, and then we ride to Vinyl Brewing, and we have beers and pizza, and we do like a raffle. But last year, like the first Tweed ride, we raised we raised like twelve hundred dollars, and um, we bought a couple. We bought three kids' bikes for like older kids, like middle school kids, mm-hmm. like kids that don't have bikes, kids that need to get to school, maybe an after school job, like you know, like as transportation. And then this year, the money we raised. Um, is going towards an outdoor uh, bicycle pump and a fix-it station, which, like, stays outside. Cool. It's got, like, little tools on it. And then the pump is – it's a hand pump, but it's industrial. Like, it's for outside. Um, we didn't raise enough for it, so we're still working on it. But that's Why? what the Tweed ride all was this, for this year. Doing all this – Why? Why do you do all this? Um, Why? I, I don't know. Cause what you fun. just said is amazing. Like, why? Why? <laughs> But that's like organized uh, and doing all I that. I know. It's very organized. And Where if you know from? me, I am like the least organized person. Oh, I know you. I'm it's like, th- this is my organized thing. But why? Why do all that? I don't know. It's fun. I like it. And I want people to ride bikes. But riding bikes <laughs> is fun. But to do all that takes a lot of energy. I know. But it's, I don't know. It's a good time. Like, we have, like, like I'm listening to you, man. That's have like 30 people come out for the tweed ride. You got to monetize it a little bit that's, more than that. But 30 people. That's a lot. Okay. You know, and normally I get like seven, eight, I love 10. your photographs. They're in the, on Thank the web. You. And, and then people come from like all over the place. It's good. Like we're having people come from out of town to come here and ride bikes with me, which makes me feel. A so tell my audience what happened when you do all this stuff. What happens to you? What do they invite you to do in Philly? <laughs> uh, so I was invited to do a like a roundtable talk. I don't know. It's still kind of being finalized, but it's for the Greenways. Hold on, I gotta look it up. This is I did look this up earlier mm-hmm. because I cannot remember because I am brain dead. Um, <laughs> The uh, it's called the East Coast Greenway, which is they're trying to do like a 3,000 mile bike path, like bike, walk, pedestrian path from mm-hmm. sort of like the Appalachian Trail kind of. Right. So, like the whole way, mm-hmm. but um, it's the Mid Atlantic Greenway okay. speed, cool. whatever. It's like three days, it's in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. And I was asked um, by the Philadelphia Bicycle Coalition to come and speak with these other women Dude, who I've like tits. connected with. <laughs> That's and awesome. like a, it, it's yeah, it's very That's exciting. not offensive, right? I've said that before and people have no, scoffed it's fine. me. Okay, cool, great. You won't offend me, Nick. <laughs> but isn't that cool? I know, it's very exciting. I don't know what happened. Philadelphia um bicycle coalition, um, the guy's name's Leonard. What's up, Leonard? I hope you're listening. And uh, he found me on Facebook. He found Kickstand Crew on Facebook, and it like it kind of blew up. Like that's when like people started coming, like from out of town to come to our rides. Um, we had a bunch of people from Gloucester County come for our wine ride last year. Um, that's uh, her name's Rebecca, and she is the Gloucester County person for the Gloucester County Bicycle Coalition um yeah but she came out and she rode with us and she brought a bunch of friends but she kind of she does bicycling but she does it in a different way she does triathlons oh. which is like the opposite of what I do but she also does fun rides too yeah the fun so. rides are where it's I get all the other stuff it's a yeah. fun rides. yeah but she, like, could, she does that too and it's fun they do a lot of good like winery rides and stuff in Gloucester County too because so. what you found a way to do is take something that I enjoyed as a kid Right, something yeah. that I did through college just to get where I needed to get to, with the risk of losing your bike, because you didn't have a lock when you were a kid. You had a lock when you actually had a bike that you paid your own money for. Yeah. And then you've been able to take something where you can. It is pretty special what you did, what you've done. Thank you. Because you can't take it away. Do you ever realize that right now? Like you, if you you can't take away what you built, like that's where you know you really made something. 
because now you've got something that people are coming out of town to do and people are looking out. Now you have an obligation. I know. Like I really that, feel which like is pretty crazy too. The pressure Did you now. think you didn't? You never even thought about that when you created. Just to no. Have, I was like, oh, maybe a couple of people will show up. Maybe a couple of my friends will show up. Is it scary that you could actually have something where you have a hundred people part of your your? Kind group? of. Yeah. Like the tweed ride definitely makes me nervous every year. I'm like, why? What if? I don't know. What if? A hundred so, people show up. But you have. <laughs> it's so different. Like I get the bar crawl. I get all that stuff. But the fact that you want people to go in a character, you can tweak that and do yeah. other things that are totally different. But you, you do that, it makes it in the paper. How cool is that? You took yeah. from a kid who was riding bikes with her mom and dad, right, on a 10-speed, yeah. to doing that now, where now you get other people like me motivated to go buy a really, just a, I went, just impulse, bought a, dad, you don't have a bike, because I had my mountain bike, and then I, I tossed it, but now I have one of these cruisers that has like, you know, it's amazing, right, where the pedals are in the front, it's, and it's like so sitting nice. on a couch and pedaling. Yeah. Dude, it's the shit. Like, it's awesome. Yeah, it's nice. But you, you have, and it's plain and black, and it's awesome and comfortable, and the seat's great. But that's all you need, because you're not going anywhere. You're going around town. That's the best. And I, I could you go into to town. You need get saddlebags. I could, um, well, what do you mean? What's a saddlebag? Bags. I probably like could. I don't have a bag. I don't have room for a bag. Well, the, Abby and my wife have a basket. Yeah, so you need saddlebags that's nice. back. So you can go to Bagley Annie's. Oh, my God. That's my favorite it's too place cold. to ride my bike. Since I've right been out, now. Oh. Since I've been out of work, <laughs> I always say to myself, I'd love to take my bike into town. Like, go to Cassiano's, work, bring my computer. I got pretty much my whole iPad and everything in a, mm -hmm. just a sack I wear over my bag. Or my back. My sack over my back. <laughs> <laughs> bag. <laughs> All right. My back sack. So what we're going to do, my, my sack bag, <laughs> and I do that. But the fact that I want to go in there, but it's too damn cold. And I want to do is. that. Yeah. And I'd love I to mean, do that. I mean, but I've met people that... They're doing it. I'm a and puss. It's insane. I, I know. It. I really am. I don't want to be a fair weather rider, but I really am. I'm sorry. I feel bad for everyone no that's bikes. bundling well, up. Well, the news is telling you don't do that or you'll well, die. Well, not right now. I mean, today was four degrees. Yeah. So today might be. <sighs> yeah. But a few weeks ago, we rode to um, we rode to the diner. We rode to um, Harley Dawn. It was 16 miles. I mean, it was cold. Harley Dawn's a nice place. I have a friend we, of mine who. We wore, uh, I wore mittens. But like once you're riding, you're no, good. You're it warm. was like a nice day. Well, I did that as a kid. I just I'm a grown man and I'm a yeah. I'm a sass. So uh, a friend of mine actually, uh, John Bradley. You know who he is. He's a vlogger. He's been on John my Bradley. podcast What's before. Up, John Bradley. Yo, JB, J to the B to the Bradley. That's the song that we my kids and I created. But I'm gonna. <laughs> did you know that, dude? I did that on a Facebook Live. It was so funny. J to the B to the Bradley. So John Bradley, he's one of the greatest people I've ever met. He needs um, to come ride bikes with us. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to get him in the rotary. So. We're all trying to get him into what we're doing. John Bradley, he is the, the, the complete uh, candidate for anything that you're doing <laughs> in the community. Come join us. But he rides a, a penny board. Uh, I know. And and I don't know how he does it. I We have one in the garage, man. I Like Nate got one for Christmas once. I I flipped that, like I kicked it out, and I was like, yeah. I'm done. That's it. I want f One of the only scars I have is from a uh, skateboard. No, I want that one. That's it. I want a skateboard. I ate it. I want a skateboard <laughs> that's the size of this table with, with wheels on it because Longer, it, like it's Like a safe. surfboard. Like yeah, a surfboard like, with and, wheels. And you're just doing this. <laughs> Doing this all the time. Um, how could my audience find you and follow you, especially if you said people come away from, you know, I have a lot of listeners in South Jersey of people coming in from the community to take part in the Tweed Run. Or I keep saying run. I don't know. That's tweed what, Ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, follow Kickstand Crew. I know um, I'll put the links in the show notes, but I want you to tell. My we're on time. Facebook. Okay. It is Hamilton Kickstand Crew. And we're also on Instagram, and it's Kickstand Crew Hamilton. Let me double check that. Who's the owner of the Instagram? <laughs> Who's the admin of the Instagram yeah, page? Yeah, Kickstand Crew Hamilton. Oh, that's cool. That's good. I like that. And I'll put uh, I'll put that in the show notes. That's it. That's, yeah, that's us. Cool. Okay. Where do you <laughs> want it to go though? Like where? Like now it's it's interesting because I understand how that is. You know, creating a show like this where it goes somewhere you didn't expect it. Yeah. But where do you want the bike, the Kickstand Crew to go? Where do you want it to be? I global. Mean, what do you want? <laughs> yes, to? global. I want everyone riding their bikes. We might get there someday. Um, you know, I honestly, I like I love when people come out and ride with me. Like I love our group rides. I love when we go to the winery. But what makes me really happy is when people are like, you know, Alicia, like I thought about it. And instead of getting in my car, I got on my bike to go to XYZ downtown. Like that's what I want. Like that's kind of like the fun of it. Like, you know, like going, uh, you know, I always use Bagliani's because it's like such an easy place to go for me. But it's like, why get in your car? Like, it takes five minutes to get there on my bike. Like, it takes probably 10 minutes to get there in my car once I get in the car. And then I have to battle that parking lot. It's like, I don't know. Like, just think about it. Like, 
it's fun. It's just like a better way to get around. You get some fresh air. You get to see some things. Like you get to like look at stuff. I don't know. You know? It's, basically, what you did is like, you found a way to take all that fun we had as kids and yeah. just basically. Make it- like, it's fun riding a bike. You know how much, like, when you get in your car, do you look at anything? No. You're, like, in your car. Bike's great. You're it's driving. Like in a convertible. You're, like, mm. Yeah. Like, you get to see stuff. You get to see, like. Smell the air, too. Yeah. You get to, to, like. Smell everything. I'm also an architecture nerd, so, like, I like looking at people's really? houses. Cool. So, like, when I ride, I'm, like, oh, look at this person's house. You just check out their landscaping. Like, not in a weird way. It's just you're going by slower, and you're outside, and you get to see the Rowan is such a goddamn rush. Rowan a goddamn yeah, rush. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, everyone talks about kids being overscheduled, but adults Adults are overscheduled. I bet there and there are more adults riding bikes in town. There are kids because oh, we don't want our kids. No, our kids will like flip and hurt themselves because they don't have helmets. Or they <laughs> actually, we had helmets for the kids and they outgrew them. I'm like, yeah, screw it. Because <laughs> you keep buying helmets. Like they don't make helmets that are. They make like, helmets that are adjustable, no. but not enough. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know. My kids are still little, so I'm not there yet. But yeah, but they will be. Yeah, but we, we have don't... a small bike, by the way. Do you know anywhere where you can donate bikes? Locally? I do. Well, I got a small not bike. super locally, but... Um, That's one thing the problem was. I wanted to donate my bike, but no one wanted to take it. So I felt compelled with the Trek to get it serviced. I paid 100 bucks to get it serviced. Like I told you, it rode 100, yeah. mile, or 100 miles, half a mile. And then it blew the up. The crank locked, and I'm like, this sucks. Yeah. There's um there's a few places around, not like super local, but like down the shore, there's a place in Asbury. They take old bikes. Asbury... And- Park? Asbury Park. Which oh wow, jeez, that's a, a little far. That's live, There's yeah. a place in Philly too. Um, both of them are kind of the same concept where they take bikes. You can donate your bike. Um, kids work on them. They teach kids how cool. to work on bikes, like and then they sell the bikes. So that's like the it's they're nonprofits. Um, the one in Philly's called. It should be all nonprofit. Yeah, the one in Philly's called Philly Bike Works. I'm not sure about the one. I know or, there's one or, or in Asbury I could do. too. I could just go to Philly, leave the bike on the street. There you go, bike and then, share. Boom, bike share. There you go. <laughs> and have some grown man riding a bike that's four feet long, and, and it's got wheels that are eighteen inches across. That there Nathan rode when he was four years old. That's, that's good it. Stuff. That's okay, it. Cool. There you go. Uh, Alicia, thank you for hanging out with me. Thanks, uh, today. Nick. That was good stuff. That was good stuff. This is thank Alicia's you. first time on the show, so uh, you know, tell your friends that Alicia's awesome. <laughs> so I will put the a link to the Kickstand Crew in Hamilton, founded two years ago. Uh, it's your second season. Sorry, I don't know we math. We just finished our second season. Second season. Yeah. Uh, I'll put it in the show notes. Um, I want to thank everybody for taking the time to listen mm-hmm. and download this show. We are recording this a week before, actually. I've, that's one thing I've never done. I've never recorded a show, posted a show, and recorded a show in the same day. Because I did my... Oh, you did the one. Uh, well, the I did 1. it. Well, well, I was lazy last night, and I recorded the show this morning because everyone was... Uh, they had to go in two hours late because it's you know what it's funny tomorrow it's going to be just as cold as it was today but there's no delay tomorrow weird so <laughs> i recorded the show and put the mini out and i'm sure you already listened to that because you can listen to that mini soda and all our past episode all the way back to, to episode 100 which is weird i i, I thought uh, i i might just after you know and, and actually there's more shows than 100 episodes there's like 150 some odd episodes because i do a lot of Half, half episodes, mini sods. <laughs> I love to go back. I've never listened to them. I'm going to start going back and listen to them. I was thought I thought about doing blogs on each one. I thought that'd be kind of fun, like a retrospect hmm. of what was really going on. Like a this is your life. Yes, I know because I'm crazy like that, and I got so much free time. You're doing your own. Uh, isn't this that weird? Is your life? Isn't that ridiculous? Like, yeah, it's weird. <laughs> Looking up, like talking about myself and talking about myself, talking about myself. <laughs> so I want to thank you guys for for listening and watching. If you're watching this on YouTube, because I haven't done a video in a while, this will post on the same day that this show posts because. If you've gotten this far and you're, you you want to listen to the next four or five minutes of the show, definitely go on YouTube and you can watch this. Um, uh, uh, you can follow me on Instagram at dependent underscore Nick. You can check out our Facebook page at the Dependent Independent Podcast page. I do run, uh, I'm building this little um, uh, consulting business of mine called the Dependent Independent Productions. If you are an aspiring podcast and you want to know more, and especially if you're local and you listen to the show and you want to learn more about the video and the audio about what we do and you have a brand that you want to expand and get into this realm, please let me know. You can follow that Facebook page at uh, Dependent Independent Productions. You can follow my personal page at Nick Goblich. That's G-O-B-L-I-R-S-C-H. And it's weird because it's funny, guys. Just, I never said this on the show, but when I first started the show, I thought, one, if I said my real name on the podcast, <laughs> it would blow my anonymity, which is so stupid. They're going to find you. So dumb. I thought I'd lose my job and everything. But it really doesn't matter. No one gives a shit. But my, I'll put the link in the show notes so you know exactly how to find me. But f- f- feel free to follow me. I used to, it's weird, like, like um, 
you know, you, you, you're you yourself, Alicia, and then you build this, you know, well, this is what I do. This is who I am and this is what I do. But the irony is, is who I am is what I do. So I think it's about time I kind of combine the two. So rather than having... It's one in the same, it, It's so stupid. It's so time. It's weird. I'm sorry. I'm a creator. I'm an artist. I, I, I lose a lot of sleep. <laughs> so I don't know why I do that. So you can uh, follow me all there, but you can check the links in the show notes. Make sure you share the show, rate the show, and make sure you subscribe. So that way the show, when it posts on 9 a.m. every Thursday, you can hear it in your podcast. Alicia, would you like to leave anything... Uh, that's weird. I don't want to say that again. Would you like to leave anything? Would you like to share anything with my audience that we haven't shared uh, up till now? Hmm. And like, I think there's like more a, beer like in the a, Like a fun fact or just like, you, a, no, like a shout out to weird. myself? I'm kind of old school. So, you know, in understanding broadcasting, you know, I go, would you like to share anything else? And usually people just, they say something. Plug themselves? No, plug themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Don't plug yourself. Uh, don't do that. Just whatever. No, I'm just, you know, an opportunity. You have a microphone in front of you. Huh. Are, are you nervous? Are you still nervous now? I'm do you feel still better? nervous. You're still nervous, dude. I'm we went, so we nervous. We went through this whole thing. You did a great job talking we'll about see. yourself. It's great. You're next time. To, Maybe next time I won't be so nervous. <laughs> what are you talking about? What was, oh, I got to go back to listen to the show because you talked about something that we would do the show on. Something, do you remember? I don't remember. Okay, remember. I'll have to go back and listen. Yeah. And I don't. Oh, so, breaking my finger. Oh, that yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. College. Anything That's else a whole you want to So they can find uh, you on Facebook, Kickstand You can find crew. me on Facebook, Kickstand Crew stuff? Hamilton. Um, Instagram, Kickstand Kick Crew Hamilton. My personal stuff. Uh, no, you don't have to do that. <laughs> I mean, you're you. Hi. Right? I'm. <laughs> no, I mean, not that. I mean, some people are like, oh, follow me on this and that and the other thing. No, no, no. Yeah. Alicia Murphy. Okay. Go ride your bike. Ride have your some, bike. Have yeah. some fun, people. And if you feel like really being fresh air. a beer your daredevil, yeah. remember, a one by four, eight inches long on a brick. Yes. And hit it, it as hard as you can with a cruiser and pull that wheel up <laughs> all the way up until you see the sunrise and you land flat on your back. And if that doesn't work, stick your foot between the dude, fender and the wheel. <laughs> dude, I'll call that the Newton endo. I mean, I swear, dude, I hit my foot in that thing and it was like the earth changed. Like everything changed. You're like, right? And then you, you, and then I was like, oh my God. Oh my, what is this? And then the bike comes flying. I mean, I swear that's when, you know you're in trouble when your friends come running over. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, I'm good. I, that is was bad. That, that looked good, right? Like, it's weird. All the <laughs> shit, none of that shit was on video. Like the fact that now my dudes would be like, no, dude, you're cool. And they don't video your phone. Terrible. As your, it's awful. Your Children are dislocated. awful. Children are awful. They really are. Oh, but we did build a bike ramp at my house for my kids. We have a bike park in How our parking lot. Okay, they're cool. That's I mean, they're three and five, so it's not very big, but my three-year-old definitely was ripping around there on his scooter when he was one. <laughs> Do you still have it? Yeah, it's in our okay, driveway. Cool. All right, we'll come by. Yeah, it's very cool. You tell me where you I live like when we're done. All right. Guys, thank you for listening to episode 102 of the Dependent Independent Podcast. This is me, and this is Alicia, and we are out. Later. Can you stare at it? <laughs> <laughs>